Hey, old Flatman here. So, um, it will never be available, but I did record about four minutes, but then my dog, Cyrus, decided to be a doo 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 and have zero patience and lick a metal bowl as it like licked its way across the office room. And it's just like, oh my gosh. <sighs> He's like a two year old, and I love children, and I love fur children, and I love him but he can be exhausting sometimes because it's just like, dude, can you just chill? Like my German Shepherd right here, Perrin, he's amazing, he's just chilling. He's just like, okay, dad's doing a thing, we're just gonna chill, but not Cyrus. Anyways, today what I wanna talk about was Ender's Shadow series, um, which is science fiction, a uh, series of six books written by Orson Scott Card, who arguably is kind of like the father of modern uh, science fiction. Science fiction basically is uh, future fiction, fiction being something that's not real, future something that happens in the future, and it needs to rely heavily on science as opposed to magic. So one could kind of argue Star Wars is not science fiction. It's kind of like uh, I get, it's not quite fantasy. It's like future fantasy. I don't really know what Star Wars is. It's kind of confusing. They like to pretend that they're science fiction, but it's, and, and that's a whole other debate about whether or not Star Wars is science fiction or if it's fantasy or whatever, because they use magical mind powers. I don't really care. Not really relevant to what we're talking about right now at all. So for those of you who may not know about the Shadow series, separate from the Shadow series, there was this book, which kind of set off this whole chain of events, this series called Ender's Game. Um, and if you haven't read it, I highly suggest you do that. Cool thing is you don't need to have read that book before starting this series, but you probably should because it, everyone has read it. Who's ever read a book about science fiction, it's kind of like, probably top 10, if not top five, or even top three books. Like if somebody suggests science fiction, usually the first thing that comes out of their mouth is read Ender's Game. So just read it because then you can talk to anyone about it. Now, what's interesting is there are two separate series. There is Ender's Game and like books that go on that journey. And then there's Ender's Shadow following a main character known as Bean and going on this journey and his journey and uh, yeah. And what happens if you go online is you'll find there kind of is two camps. There is Bean's camp and then Ender's camp as opposed to you know people who think one character is better than the other. And frankly, totally let you know, I am totally team Bean, like 110% team Bean. I think Ender's a great person. I think he's terrific and wonderful character. I just don't really like the first book is great beyond that they're good and as a whole they're great but I it was a bit much for me to get through it and it kind of hurt sometimes like ah uh, it just wasn't my style so I wanted to just talk about Ender's Shadow Ender's Game is like one of the best books ever written as far as science fiction goes and concept wise and interesting stuff. And it was the equivalent of like when Harry Potter came out, um, just everyone was like, Oh my God. And it wasn't quite that big because Harry Potter is kind of its own thing. But in the sci-fi world, in the modern sci-fi world, it set probably a ridiculous amount of records. Okay. And that's great. That's fine. Um, w what was interesting is later, and, and I found this out in the Audible. One thing that I thought was fun for those of you like myself that are questioning whether it's cheating to listen to books via Audible or, you know, whatever. Orson Scott Card, who's the author of this book series, said in no uncertain terms that how he writes is as if people would listen to it by good professional uh, orators. So just so you know, one of the most prolific science fiction authors of all time and one of the biggest if not the biggest science fiction author who's writing today said you're good listen to audiobooks 
So I've been doing it anyways. I, I jammed out. It took me way too little time to get through all six of these books because I just stopped doing a lot of other things like making videos and did this. So on to this. I don't really want to delve into and do a ton of spoilers because I want you to read these. But I will say this. So book one, two, and three. The first one is a companion novel, if you will, to Ender's Game. So I, you don't have to, but I suggest you read Ender's Game. And then the first novel is re Ender's Shadow. And it is kind of a companion novel to Ender's Game. Um, there is a movie that came out. I think the movie's garbage. It's called Ender's Game. I think the movie's garbage, garbage, garbage. Um, that's my opinion. And I'm kind of disappointed that Orson Scott Card allowed it to happen. And he does talk about it in the audio book about like, oh, I like this and the, we're working on this film. And he said no to a lot of other stuff. So I do applaud that. And I know Hollywood is very, apparently it's very difficult to make a good movie because they do so many crap movies, but that's neither here nor there. So first is Ender Shadow and it introduces you to the titular character, Ender, uh, Bean rather, and kind of how he, his beginning life and how he catches up with Ender in battle school, in space, and then does some stuff and then leads to the final crescendo that is Ender's game. Um, and it's told from Bean's perspective with some other like ancillary stuff. And it's really interesting. And frankly, Bean to me, for those of you Trekkies out there will understand, he's like the equivalent of Spock. But Ender is not Captain Kirk. So it's kind of weird because you don't really get a Captain Kirk. You get a Spock and then someone else. And I'm a, fav a fan of Spock because he, there's some human elements that kind of humanize Bean and, and keep him whole. The second one is rather interesting because Bean is such a interesting person, interesting character, and so hyper intelligent. He kind of predicted part of the problem that happened in the second book. And it's so fascinating how he goes through and kind of establishes who he is. Excuse me. Has to confront his demons and his problems and his concerns, but it's all centered in like earth and how to deal with earth stuff, not going out into space, but like in a, in a future world, like imagine if you will, like there's a world war three or an alien invasion, all the world unifies. And then as soon as the alien invasion's over, then all the world starts looking at each other and like, Rah! and the book does a fantastic job of kind of talking about what, how, what, how, how that would happen, how that would work out, whatever. The third book, which is called uh, Shadow Puppets, is kind of the uh, a, f a finish, if you will, on that concept of like some things have come to a head and some things have settled out and whatever. And it kind of finishes this through line that Bean had with his uh, nemesis, if you will. Um, and Orson just does a terrific job of talking about huge things while keeping you focused on the little things. Sorry, Orson, yeah, Orson Scott Card. On the little things. And it's amazing. It's just, it's, it, so few authors do that well. And it makes you feel like you know about things as if it was like a mystery, but you don't really know without it being a mystery at all. And it's just, it's delicious. I've, I've read it several times. There's some key points in there that I think of to this day, not even in the context of the book, but just as kind of life things of beautiful epic moments. And I think that in and of itself is terrific. I, I don't know if I qualify these as classics. I kind of think of them as such because I think of them regularly and I utilize them as tools to kind of, hey, how do I improve myself? So I, I don't know if that qualifies that for you, but yeah. Uh, fourth book in the series is called Shadow of the Giant. <sighs> this one is is truly like the, the prologue, if you will, to being on Earth with Bean and the situation. And you find out, you know, Bean's got this thing where he keeps growing, like his body just keeps growing. He starts off really small, and he's, he's got this thing 
that makes him hyper intelligent. But the problem is, is he's going to keep growing and never stop growing. So there's that thing. And then they come up with a resolution. Okay. And I guess this is a little bit spoilers, but I'm not giving you anything that you couldn't read in like the summary of the books. Okay. So in a way, book four is kind of like the end of one, one to four is really what I consider being story and is a terrific decology, if you will, four quad series in, in and of itself. Then you get this interesting book called Shadows in Flight, which is really short. It's only six hours to listen to. It's, it's, it's like half a book, less than half a book. And it's so fascinating because this character that I had read and listened to and like really grew to love and the person's still that person, but now he's in this book and he's like hardly there. And he has three offspring who are also hyper intelligent and also have the same problem of being very small, but mature extremely fast because of their extreme intelligence. But eventually they're gonna die of, of giantism because, you know, they have this problem with their body. And Bean's there, and he's helping his offspring, his kids, deal with that. And then something else comes up. And it's so interesting to see this character who, for all intents and purposes, kind of, again, like Spock. And if you don't understand the reference, somebody who's, like, kind of emotionally detached. Like, they're very analytical, very, this is duh, 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 by the numbers. And now they need to be in a situation where it's like, hey, uh, you gotta handle this with emotion and, and, and compassion and understanding. And having him deal with that, especially with three kids who were hyper intelligent. So imagine a two year old that doesn't just throw their binky at you, but also is like explaining to you why you're such a like idiot and knows how to get out of everything and get into everything and thinks they know everything. And you're just like, just think of a two-year-old and an 18-year-old combined. Or, yeah, but even worse. And you're just like, oh my God. Or like a, a two-year-old, a body of a two-year-old, but like the intelligence of a 35-year-old who finished college and got a master's, but with the like realistic, real understanding of like, a seven-year-old is probably a fair example. So it's like, they're very, very smart. They're small bodied, but they, they know a lot of things, but they also are like immature intellectually is a good way to say it. Anyhow, so that is a short but sweet little novel, novella, if you will, um, that I appreciated. And I didn't even remember it. I, I feel like I had read it before, but I hadn't, I don't know. I couldn't remember it. It was great. It was great to catch up on. Not really, like, it's kind of part of it, but not. And then this last one, it's interesting because it features not only the, the kids, but also the grandkids of Bean. So Bean's not in it at all. And it's this whole other thing. It's called The Last Shadow. So I presume it's the last book in the series. And in a way, it kind of encapsulates a lot of the things that were in the last one, which is fatherhood with really intelligent offspring um, or even just general motherhood and and how to deal with kids like that and maturity versus intelligence and how there is a difference between those things and I feel like everyone kind of gets a good send off a good thing and there it the problem is is if you don't read the enders stuff this sixth book I felt, it felt kind of hollow. Like I was missing some things. Not because I missed anything. Like they explained it enough. You don't have to read the other books. But because I hadn't read the other books, Ender's series in a long time, I felt like I was kind of missing out on something um, a little bit. And that was weird. And, and, and so, I would suggest finishing it. I finished it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. With each one of the other books in different times and some some of the books several times, I teared up. I had that emotional heart-wrenching moment that you get where you just, you know, because you're feeling it with those characters. 
I didn't really get it with the last book. And it isn't because it's bad. It just, maybe it was too many characters. I don't know. Um, but with all the other books, I got it in, in greater or, large, or lesser degrees. So anyways, getting out of that, I highly suggest you read the Ender Shadow series. I think it's fantastic. Um, it's just, if you're at all into science fiction, or if you know someone who is and you would like to talk to them about it, that's what I would suggest. So that's Plaid Man's uh, rant for the day. Sorry, it was so long. It just had to talk about six books. Um, I love you all. I'm going to make more videos. Thank you very much. Wish me luck on my job hunt and my house hunt and things like that. Things are looking up. It's just a matter of confronting and pushing through it. So if you're having trouble with that, get people around you who can help you. Get, or at least get one person who you can talk to and help you through it. For me, it's my wife. Um, but I also, I do lean on other people around me. I have a couple close friends that I lean on to help me. So if you don't have that, feel free to message me. I can be your pen pal. It's not the same, but I will do that for you if you want. All right. I love you all. Plaid men out. Bye.